There's a war between physical silver stackers and those who like to play the numbers game with silver ETFs. So which is best? Well, there are advantages and disadvantages between the two, but we'll take a quick dive into both of them and see how they match up. We're going to go over that and a lot more, so make sure you stay tuned. YouTube, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack. Now, before I get rolling, I'd like to thank you for being here with me today to check out the new video. And of course, for all that amazing support, uh, what you guys have done for the channel has been unbelievable. And I can't thank you enough for that. I really can't. Uh, it's all part of being the best damn community on YouTube, without a doubt. Now, today, we're going to talk about the benefits of physically holding our silver versus putting money into silver ETFs. So in the event you're not familiar with ETFs, well, uh, they're defined as an exchange traded fund and they basically allow you to invest in silver through the stock market without having to store or insure the silver you invest in. In a nutshell, you put your money into silver that you basically don't own. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> and uh, all your silver, all your paper silver is set up as a grantor trust. So when you buy a share of silver, the ETF allegedly backs it up with one ounce that's one ounce of uh, vaulted physical silver. And if you're rolling your eyes right now, I'm right there with you. But all that's for a video down the road. Now, just as an FYI, I got to say this. This is not a video for getting into silver ETFs. No stocks, no mines, no nothing. Uh, there's no sponsorship, no selling, no anything. I'm not even going to list the different silver ETFs because that's not what this channel is about. It takes literally two seconds to do a Google search for uh, silver ETFs. So if you want to go down that road, you're more than welcome to, just not with an endorsement of any kind from me. So all that being said, let's go ahead and uh, compare the two. All right, we're going to start off with the advantages of holding your own silver. Now, for most of you watching this, you already know the benefits. You already know. And uh, why we always take possession of our metals. So I'm not going to dive too deeply into this. But a few advantages of holding your own physical silver are, number one, you spend money on silver, you take it home, and you're physically holding a tangible asset. Number two, you act as your own bank, essentially. You can add and sell with immediate payment to yourself. Number three, you're always gonna have access to it, unlike a bank going down, power outages that prevent you from uh, accessing your stockbroker online, SHTF. It's always there when you need it. Physical metals don't need to rely on electricity to gain access to it, right? Number four, metals are private and confidential, at least for now. <laughs> We'll see what happens if we go to the CBDCs. And number five, you can take it with you. Metals are heavy. I get it. But let's face it, a thousand troy ounces adds up to 68.5 pounds. And I think most of us can manage that. Uh, and the majority of stackers are under a thousand ounces anyway. We talked about that in my last video. But what are the disadvantages of holding physical silver? Uh, well, let's take a look. Number one, premiums. <laughs> it is what it is, guys. The middlemen have to make their bones. So premiums aren't going anywhere. Number two, storage. Silver takes up a lot of space. So you're going to have to account for that in your house. And if you're having thoughts of a, a bank safety deposit box, then you might want to do some research on them because uh, for me, there's no way in hell I'd ever store my metals in one, ever. Number three, security. While some people find hidey holes in their houses, whatever, you're going to need to consider a safe. I mean, let's be realistic. And not one of those cheap field and stream safes from Wally World. <laughs> Come on now. I'm talking about something that will actually keep a thief out uh, or delay him with a T rating. Put it this way. If you and one friend can move your safe that you're currently using, you probably have the wrong kind. <laughs> uh, and please don't buy those fake book safes. Oh, they're terrible. Any thief with a quarter brain is already well aware of those and they stand out like sore thumbs. Number four, liquidity. Look, it takes time to sell metals, and you can't just go out and spend them like cash. You can't get groceries and whatnot. Not yet, anyway. Uh, some states are moving toward that and already have adopted it, but uh, we may see an entire United States that accepts silver and gold for payment on goods and services. It's just going to take some time. But like anything else you sell, you're going to have to look around for the best returns you can find when you go uh, to get rid of everything, and that takes time. And number five, they don't produce silver. doesn't produce any kind of income or interest for that matter. Um, this is the exact reason finance gurus will tell you, hey, don't put all your financial eggs in one basket when it comes to precious metals. Uh, they should only be a small part of your overall portfolio. 
So those were the uh, advantages and disadvantages of physically holding your silver. Uh, we're going to move on now to ETFs, and there are quite a few different ones, but the most common ones are going to be physical silver ETFs, silver futures ETFs, silver miner ETFs, and leveraged and inverse silver ETFs. Uh, those kind of allow traders to capitalize on short-term price movements. So for all you guys that like to short out there, might be your uh, might be your deal. But here's some advantages of a simple physical silver ETF. Uh, because I'm not even going to remotely get into those others. It'd take way too long. Number one, you can gain exposure to silver price without having to buy, store, or transport physical silver. Number two, liquidity. You can buy and sell during trading hours, and it's a fairly quick process. Number three, lower cost and expense ratio. You're not paying those silver premiums that we talked about earlier. Um, it's a lot cheaper. Number four, transparency. Investors are going to know exactly what they hold within the fund. It's always there. Number five, no storage or security, which means none of those expensive safes we were just talking about, uh, busting holes in your walls to hide the stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what are the disadvantages of ETFs? Well, let's go over them. Uh, some of the advantages sounded pretty decent, right? Sure. I mean, that sounds like a viable alternative for, uh, for uh, stacking precious metals. Well, not stacking, but accumulating. Uh, but before you go rushing in, a couple things you're going to need to be mindful of. Number one, market risk. Uh, the value of ETFs are tied closely to the price of silver. And uh, we all know about the volatility <laughs> of silver price. Number two, tracking errors. Uh, they're supposed to track the price of silver, but they might not mirror the spot price of silver due to factors like tracking errors or the use of derivatives. Uh, they'll typically adjust given time, but you never know. It's something you got to keep an eye on. Number three, lack of income, just like physical silver. Most ETFs don't generate income through dividends or interest. They're going to rely on capital appreciation, and that's driven only by silver price movements. As silver goes up, you make money, you sell, get your little investment in. Number four, taxes. Uh, since silver ETFs are considered an investment by the IRS, that means you're going to be taxed on ETFs for capital gains. Now, if you hold your ETFs in an IRA, then they're not subject to the IRS taxes. And number five, uh, ETFs are not a physical asset. And... Uh, they're not always backed by physical silver, which increases the risk. You can't trade your certificates, your ETF certificates in for physical silver, at least that, not that I'm aware of. And if everybody tried to cash in their ETFs for physical silver, it wouldn't be nearly enough to go around, not even nearly. But the worst part is this. ETFs have a tendency to make it look like there's more silver supply out there than there really is which is just one of the ways the price of silver is manipulated to stay low. All right, so we've gone over the advantages and disadvantages of physical silver and silver ETFs. Now, honestly, both have their fair share of, uh, of benefits. They do. And um, seriously, I've actually thought about throwing a few bucks at a silver ETF just for the hell of it, right? I uh, just want to get some exposure to it, play around with it. It can't hurt. It can't hurt because, let's face it, you never gamble money that you can't afford to lose right we got to live by that but what's my overall impression of both well you guys know me you know i'm holding physical all the way uh, i'm of the firm belief that if you don't hold it you don't own it and i'm comfortable with keeping my metals in undisclosed safe locations i'm good with that and i actually like to look at my stuff from time to time right i mean come on we uh, a bunch of us i would i would venture a bet that most of us like to look at our stuff uh might as well have some fun with it i mean we're certainly spending enough on it right Right. All right. There you have it. Silver ETFs versus physical silver. Now, some folks are going to swear by one or the other, and hey, sometimes both. I guess it doesn't hurt to have a mix of the two. But as I said before, while I might throw some money at an ETF, uh, I'm holding physical all the way. All the way. But be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts and uh, what your preference is. Physical? Phony? And if you played around with ETFs, sound off on that too. I'd love to hear how I. Uh, how that's gone for you. Now, I have a blast going through the comments, and I do try to respond to each one. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Silver and Gold Stack Attack. And if you made it this far, well, kudos to you. I'll definitely catch up with you in the next episode, but in the meantime, you know what's up. What do you want to do with your life? Damn right. It's stacked. Stay safe and be well, everyone.
I need help of here. Peace, folks. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. 